Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Belated Hardware Reviews. Today we're going to take a look at the Impulse Controller, Pocket Remote, and Key Finder. So this is obviously a little Bluetooth controller, and what you'll notice right off the bat is that it's extremely small. Uh, this is a little viewing window, and their packaging is actually really nice. I like it that they show off that it's such a small device. In fact, I think it is the smallest Bluetooth controller, or at least they say it, that um, they said it online that it's the smallest. I'm going to try to get this right. The smallest Bluetooth controller that connects with Android and iOS gamepad, something like that. I think what they mean is that there might be smaller controllers out there, but not small controllers that connect to Android and iOS. And apparently right here, it'll connect to Android, iOS, uh, yeah, Mac, Windows, and also Apple TV. Um, I do know that it started out as a Kickstarter project, and they raised about three times what they were supposed to or what they were asking for. And so just a little bit under 150000 I think. And um, Pocket Gamer calls it genius. And I think I'll be the judge of that. But again, I don't know how the reviews have gone for this thing. I really don't know what people think about it. So I'm, I'm going in completely blind. It's pretty interesting that I haven't really heard that much about it, except, you know, of course I always heard that there was this tiny little controller that was going on the market. But I haven't heard a lot about it, so I don't know if that is a good sign or a bad sign. But hopefully when we test it out, we'll figure this out. Uh, perfect in-car companion. It activates Siri. That's pretty cool right there. That really has me interested. Um, let me see. It's also ambidextrous, which in this case means that you have six fingers. I'm kidding, no. But uh, it seems that you could use it one way or the other. So that's pretty cool. I didn't think about that. Uh, two players, you can connect it with another one. Um, let me see. Uh, here's the requirements right there. I'll let you guys take a look. Zoom, please. Thank you. All right, or focus. There you go. Come on, don't flame me in the comments. All right. Anyways, I really want to take a look at this, and I really want to do a little long-term test with it because I don't really intend for a lot of these episodes to be long-term tests like the last one was with the Wikipad, but with the Wikipad or something like this, it's a portable system. It's meant for you to actually take it out and use it every day, especially this one where you can connect it you know, to your, to your keys. So... That's why I'm probably going to make this another 30-day test, and I'll go ahead and figure out what is um, whether this thing lives up to the hype, I guess we could say. I did watch the Kickstarter video, and that was pretty impressive. It seems that they came to Kickstarter with a finished prototype and the way that it should be done, and then they went ahead and just um, worked off of that and then delivered a product. One of the things i got to say, though, is that the, um, the prototype D-pad that they showed in the video it wasn't a D-pad, it was one of those circular little disc things. and But they changed it into a D-pad, and that is very good on them. I'm always up for whenever a company does that. That really shows that they know what they're doing as far as gaming goes. Because those little circle pads, they never work. The only one that ever even came close was, uh, on portable systems, the only one that ever came close was the Neo Geo Pocket. And that one had an incredible controller. All right. So this is everything. Ooh, complete tutorials available. Okay. Eh, I guess all the buttons do different things. The buttons, they all have weird symbols on them too. So let's figure out what's going on here. Let's save this. Uh, oh, great. We got warnings. Um, okay. Yeah. Please see the tutorial. They've mentioned that like three times. So wonder if it's very important. It might be. I don't like this. This seems like it's going to be very flimsy. It might break off and then I'll lose the damn thing. Alright. Micro USB to full USB. And this is the little sleeve right here that comes with it. This thing is tiny. Absolutely tiny. This is incredible. One of the things I've been wondering about is this case. It seems really weird. I wonder... I don't think it comes apart or anything, but it has that weird little weird little cut in it right there. I wonder what that is. Um, the buttons feel reasonably nice. That's good. Uh, back buttons. Yeah, those are okay. This actually feels really nice. I like the finish on it too. It's got this sort of matte finish on it. I like that. I don't like it when it's too shiny. And yeah. Okay, uh, there's the micro, S, micro USB port. Um, 
what is that? I guess maybe where you reset it? I don't know. Uh, there's a the little thing for your key fob. Uh, all right. Oh, let's try to put this together and see how it works. Okay. Maybe that's why, because it only goes in one way. Uh, no. This way, I guess. Uh, I hope I'm not breaking it. Let's see. Okay, I think you do put it in that way, but you have to force it in a little. There you go. Okay, that's what it's for, because it, like, indents... It, it's kind of springy. It's a, it's a springy piece of plastic that locks in once it gets over to this point. But then how do you get it out? <laughs> that's going to be an interesting dilemma right there. I'm guessing you push out this way because you would have your keys connected there still. It's a little hard to get out, but... Oh well, I like that. That is pretty pretty sturdy right there. Now, let me show you how small this thing is, because again, it is tiny. Here is a gift card, which is of course, you know, the size of an average credit card. And that's how small it is. And let's also compare it to a Game Boy Micro. And there you go, it's smaller than that. Wow. I'm really gonna like this thing, I hope, I hope, I don't know. We haven't tried it or turned it on or anything. But, I don't know. We're just gonna have to see how this thing goes. I'll see you guys back in 30 days and I'll let you know what I think. All right guys, I wrapped up the long-term test and I gotta say that this is a really good device. I'm really impressed with it. And in fact, I even rewatched the uh, pitch video that they did on Kickstarter, and I gotta say, this does everything they said it would do, and more. And uh, that might be the first product that I've ever gotten on Kickstarter that I could say that it does everything that they said it was gonna do. And, because, um, I mean, usually with Kickstarter, they usually overpromise and underdeliver, unfortunately. But this is maybe one of the first devices I've ever owned that they pitched something and they delivered much more. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't have its faults, because it does have some serious design faults in here, and I'm going to get into that in just a sec. One of the bigger problems, though, is the way you take it out, there really isn't an easy way of getting it out. The way that you have to do it is by pushing this down, and at the same time, pushing through the other end, and then you could start getting it out. And it's not that easy. I think that some people, it would be a pain in the butt for them. But um, either way, it's meant to have this protection, which, I mean, it's... Uh, it's pretty it's a pretty good design that they put this on here, but I think they actually got it backwards because I Let me get out my phone here. And yes, I use an iPhone 4 because 4s because I'm a caveman But now really I, I'm not the type that cares about like new phones or anything I'll just get whatever works and to be honest. I've never found a need to upgrade it. It does everything I need it to do but um, anyways, so when you're using this thing, of course you want to use this as a controller, and then you can use this to stand up your phone, and see, you could do that, but then you have this controller with these keys dangling on it, and uh, again, this controller does not have a lot of weight, it only weighs just a few ounces, if that, and so it really does suck to have it, you know, weighed down with your keys right here, so I wish that they had put this loop, this little loop and string thing, I wish they had put it on the little protective case rather than this, because then you could just play, it would be free of this, you could just take it off of the keychain, you know, and it'll just be a controller on its own, but then your keys are on, you know, this little protective thing, which, I mean, who cares, it'll be there anyways. And I just think that that was a really big design fault that they didn't see. In fact, I've even thought about drilling a little tiny hole on the side, so that way I can just connect it right there, and then that way it'll just take care of that. But at the same time, I don't really want this on my keychain, so I don't really think I'm even going to modify it like that. But um, I have tried to find a replacement, though. That way I could you know, try to fool with it and drill holes in it, whatever I want to do. But I actually don't see a lot of these online. If you go on eBay, I don't even think you'll find any used. And I think that might be a testament to this device, actually, because, for instance, something like Ouya, you could find dozens of Ouyas online. They're just selling them left and right because people don't like the device. It didn't really turn out that well. It didn't live up to all of its promises and its pitch. But um, for this, I think that is a testament to the device that people are happy with their purchase. I, I think this might be on someone's keychain right now. And um, so I think that it did do well there. 
But that is a fault right there, especially because it's such a pain in the butt to get this off of there. You see, I guess you could kind of game like that, you know, once you take it off of there. And this thing actually does feel nice in your hands. So, um, except for the back buttons, I don't like those actually. But it does feel nice in your hands, and um, it just sucks that it's way down by the keys. And um, one of the really bad stories I gotta tell you guys, and in fact, you know what, does anyone care to guess how many times I used this in public, you know, when I was just waiting for something or anything like that? How many times did I actually take this out and game on it? The real answer is zero. There's only one time that I tested it out, it was like after the first day that I had this, and it wasn't like I wanted to game, it was more that I just wanted to try it out and see if it would work. Um, I was at a restaurant, uh, just ordering some takeout, and, uh, this is the type of restaurant <laughs> that is really good, like, the food is really good, but the service is just awful. The staff has no time for your crap. <laughs> and it was so bad because I was playing a game with this, and so I was just sitting down waiting for my food, and seriously, like, two minutes after I start the game, this, this place, it's fast. Like, two minutes afterwards, they start calling my number. They're like, hey, your order's ready and everything. And so, seriously, I'm trying to reconnect this. Like, watch. Let me try to do that right now. Gotta get this little tiny loop. Put it on... There we go, on this thing. And by the way, I have this little this little loop that is a very simplified one. Just, like, one little piece. That way, I could get it on there just that quicker. But anyway, so I put this on here. And then I have my phone right here. And I gotta put this back in. And you gotta put it in the right way, because it only goes in one way, and only on one side. It doesn't go the other way. But anyway, so then I gotta lock that in, and then I have my phone, and I gotta put that in here. It's like, it's like the, it's like Forrest Gump when he's like reassembling the rifle. You gotta imagine that I'm doing all this really quickly, but still, the guy, he's yelling out my order, number 26 or whatever I was, he's yelling out this, and I look like a jerk because I'm keeping him waiting, and I'm trying to assemble all this, so... It was not very flattering. I might be banned from that restaurant. But either way, that shows you that I don't like how how this was made. And I was so, so happy when the 30 days was over and I could take this off my keys. Because I was done with it by then. Like I said, I don't get a lot of use uh, out of this outside of the home. So it, it really doesn't work really well as a keychain attachment. And see, it's not at all that easy to take this out. But anyway, so I've been using this without without the keys attached to it. And even around the home, when I'm using this, I'll just take the keys off. Because I really like it as a controller, just as this thing right here. And um, But anyways, I've been using it a lot as a remote for podcasts. Because it does a whole bunch of different stuff other than gaming. And uh, it's basically like a remote for media and everything. So that is something that I've gotten a lot of use out of, and let me go ahead and demonstrate that. Let me see. Oh, wait. Oh, you know what? Wait, i got to show you guys a flaw. Because, you see, the way that this uh, works, and let me go ahead and turn it on, you just push that little button, and then it wakes up, and now it's ready to rock and roll. But, anyways, the way that these buttons are arranged and everything, it is arranged, there's no magic to it. They all do something on the iPhone. There, there really isn't an app that's tied to this. It just works as a Bluetooth controller, obviously. But, um, anyways, when you push this, then it brings up the, it basically pushes the home button on the iPhone. And the problem with that is that if you have this, if you have your iPhone in your pocket or in your car or something, one of the selling points that they had was that, hey, it, act it activates Siri. You can use this, uh, you know, in your car or whatever to activate Siri. And even in their advertisement, they show right there that it's like, hey, look, you're in your car, and then you can just push that, that button right there at the bottom, and then you can bring up Siri. But there is a problem with that because, of course, everyone that I know has a code on their phone. So, you see, I can activate the home button, but I can't activate Siri like that. It's not going to do it because the phone is locked up. So if you're in your car and then you need to use Siri, if you've been in your car for a few minutes, it's going to lock up the phone, and so you can't use Siri anyways. So you either got to keep your phone unlocked or don't even worry about that Siri feature. But anyways, let me go ahead and unlock my phone. Thank you. All right, now let's get to the Impulse app, which is pretty cool. It shows you how everything works. Works. It's a nice little tutorial, actually. But anyway, so we go to Impulsify. And this thing is, yeah, it is on. There we go. Okay. 
So anyways, right now we're in the uh, regular operating system mode. And as you can see, it actually is very, very, very responsive. Oh, shoot, you know what? I have it in the wrong mode right now. Uh, let me see. There we go. Okay, now it's in player one. I was in player two, and I think I was in the left-handed orientation. There we go. Now I'm in right-handed orientation, you see? But anyways, it's very responsive. I really like that. It actually does it very well. The back buttons are not that comfortable, like I said before. So um, I kind of wish that they would put them a little bit higher, but then again, it wouldn't be ambidextrous if, if they did it that way, or it would be harder to have it. But the way that this thing works, and you know what, it was pretty intimidating once I saw it, especially with that little sheet that you saw that came in the box. It's very intimidating because it's like, holy crap, this thing, every button does 30 different things. There's no way I'm going to be able to get the hang of this. And in fact, when I first got it, that was my hang up with it. I was like, shoot, you know, um, I even postponed the long term test because I was like, I need to figure out how this thing works. But once you actually get to use it, after about a day, then you already know their functions and everything. So it is actually pretty intuitive later. The only thing that you have to remember, though, is that all these four face buttons right here, when you go into mode, they all do different things. So watch, you hold down this mode button, and that brings up the menu. So I could push this, and that's the little game mode that we were in before. The top one, I think that brings us into Apple mode, doesn't it? Doesn't it? <laughs> uh, this test isn't going well. Oh, there we go. Okay, so there's Apple TV. And this is the remote that you use to, you know, control Apple TV. I don't have Apple TV. I don't want it. So, um, but you see some of the functions, they do work on the iPhone still. I guess you could, like, scroll to different menus or whatever with that. But then you could go ahead and play pause with the top button. Uh, escape, I guess, with the left one, but it's not showing it. Then also enter. And then also mute when you're in the Apple TV mode. But anyways, then let's go into... This, which is Universal OS. This is like if you want to use Android or Windows or whatever, then you can use this right here. And it's the same thing as the other gamepad mode. But one of the things I got to tell you is that um, I don't think it works with Android 4.0 and over, or if not, it has problems with that. Because I tried to get this to work on the Wikipad, and I could not get it to, to work. It will sync up with it. It will recognize the devices there but it won't accept any inputs from it. And I don't know if that's just with my device or if it's with Android 4.0 and later. When I went onto their forums, which are kind of strange actually, when I went onto their forums, it seems that there is a problem or two that's happening with Android 4.0 that I don't know if they ever got resolved. But either way, just, just be careful because it might not work with your Android phone or anything. But as far as iOS, it works with everything. It even says it'll work with up to iPhone 6, I believe. But um, anyways, uh, this is just really great. And let me go into another mode right here. Um, here we go. This is media mode. This is what I use it mostly for. And so you see I can hold it this way, then use that for volume. I can scroll, which, I mean, really doesn't do much when I'm listening to podcasts. But uh, then you see I can pause and play right here. And the skip feature is the best because usually when I have this, uh, when I have my phone connected to the speakers and then, you know, it's on one side of the room and I'm on the other side of the room on the couch. And so whenever the podcast gets to like a commercial or, you know, just some topic that I don't want to hear about, something boring, I'll just use these to skip and it will actually just skip 30 seconds each way. But of course, I think that's with the app that I use for podcasts. So your mileage may vary. But then there's mute, which... That is something that doesn't work on here because when I'm in media mode, it still just goes to the home screen. So you see, I'll push this, and then it'll just go back. So there is a problem with that, that that mute doesn't work. It only works when you're in like that Apple presentation mode. But um, either way, it is, it is very good. I do like this regardless. I think that this does work well for that. Now let's go ahead and try a game with this. And so I'm going to try this one right here. I was using it earlier, so... What? Come on. Okay. <laughs> Alright, I exited out of it, and now it's doing a fresh screen thing. Ah. See? There are times... There we go. You just need to make sure that you're in the right mode, because if not, it'll really trip you up. And so... Go to options... Uh, ba -ba -ba controls on arcade 
And this is one of the games that actually says on the Impulsify app that it will work with this device. But there is a problem with that. Because... Come on, come on. Alright, here we go. Alright, there is a problem because the controls work well, but... You see, they work well with this thing, and I can shoot, but the jump button is mapped to this left trigger button. And that is actually really... it's manageable, but it's not a very good solution. You see, it's very tough to jump right there. Overall, this is not a bad game. It's very simple, though. You just get from one end to the other. But still, it's not the best use of this. Alright, let's get out of this. You know what, actually... There we go. Use that to exit out. But anyway, so not all of these games work perfectly. And uh, it seems that that is a problem with the app, because they even say on there that, hey, if you want you know, your game or a game that you like to be ported so that it runs with this, go ahead and send us an email, and then we'll try to do it, and uh, try to arrange that. But it seems that they didn't get it right all the time, and that's just one of the instances where the jump button is mapped back here, and that's very unintuitive, it, it actually spoils the controls. And uh, But it doesn't work like a usual controller, because there are other iCade devices, uh, games I have on here, and they don't really work that well. But Pix and Rush is one that does work well. You see the jump button works well. It works with this, kind of like, you know, what you would expect with Mario to jump with. And then, you also have the little shooting mechanic, which works as well. So this actually does work well. I've had a lot of fun with Pix and Rush. And I didn't like the game before because of those iPhone touch controls. But with this, it actually works very, very well. If you guys haven't played this game, try it out, because you would be impressed. And like I said, everything else that they claim to do, it seems to work just fine. Even the camera shutter, I could see that this might be pretty useful because, like I said, you can prop it up like this with the little stand that it comes with. And then in camera mode, you can just use these volume buttons to click the shutter. So that actually works pretty well, and in fact, like I said, I wouldn't want to put this on my keychain, you know, for daily use, because I really don't get any daily use out of it, but it seems like I might want to take this on vacation or something. That it seems like it would be pretty cool to have this at a convention, or, you know, just take it on, you know, a vacation somewhere, so that, that way you have this functionality. So I might put it on a keychain then. Uh, one of the other things about the long-term tests I found out was that the battery life is okay, it's pretty decent. I think it said on their page that the battery life is estimated at 30 days, and when I first started using it, when the test, when the long-term test started, it lasted about, I think it was maybe 10 days, and right when I needed to charge it up, I was like, oh my god, you know, I'm going to hate this thing because, you know, nobody wants to have a set of keys that they need to charge up, you know, every other week, but, um... I think the battery life, it did improve a little bit later because I was using it more sparingly. I got a little bit busier than I wasn't using it for podcasts or anything like that. And when you have it on, actually, it does use the battery. So it will go ahead and drain it if you're not careful, but uh, you just need to be careful with it. And that's actually one of the problems I have that sometimes it could be hard to find out whether it's on or not. But I figured out that, of course, this little menu button, you click it once, it'll turn on, click it again, it'll turn off. Anyway, so you turn it off, and the way that you can know whether this is on or off is that you touch a button, and if it blinks twice, that means that it is off. And then when you turn this on, when you blink it, uh, well, when you touch it, it'll just blink once. So that means that it's on, and then when it's off, it'll just blink twice. And, um, but yeah, a lot of uh, features, they do work well. Um, the battery life, like I said, afterwards, it did seem to last for the rest of the test. I didn't have any problems. And um, also, I wish it had a better way of telling you that the battery was low. Because uh, one night when the battery was low and it was trying to tell me that, it will do this little, this little chirp thing. It'll chirp three times in a row. And that's trying to tell you that it's running low on batteries. But I didn't recognize that it was this thing chirping. So it became one of those things where you're like searching around the apartment like, what the hell is chirping? What, what is this? Is it a fire alarm or what? And I wish they had a better way. Oh, I got an email.
but um, I wish there was a better way. And uh, because it, even if it would just blink, you know, just blink the home button or something, that way you know that it's running low, that would be better. Especially if you're taking this on your keychain, you're at work, it could probably drive your coworkers crazy, maybe even your boss. But the best thing is that the battery capacity really isn't that large, so you can actually charge this thing in about 30 minutes. So it doesn't even take that long, and so it's not really that painful. But either way, I'm not even going to take it out and about, I'm just going to keep it here at my place so that way I can just use it the way that I intend to use it. Uh, unless, of course, I have to go somewhere, then I'll take it for this functionality. Alright, as far as durability goes, it seems that it held up pretty well. I don't really see anything that broke on it. I know that nothing broke on it as far as the functionality goes. However, there is this little part right here that came apart, and it's about the width of a fingernail. Come on, focus. There we go. It's about the width of a fingernail, but still, I don't know if I dropped it or what happened, but I can't even close that down. I don't want to break the thing. And um, either way, there is that little part that kind of took off right there. But otherwise, it seems to have held up pretty well. So yeah, this is a great device. I do recommend getting it if you're in the market for something like this. However, that might be the biggest problem with this, because it seems that the company no longer exists, or at least I can't really find any good traces of it. Their website and everything is still up. But for whatever reason, I don't think that they're in business anymore, and that's kind of sad. Because, I mean, they made a great product on Kickstarter, and you would hope that Kickstarter would be able to kickstart their business and keep them going. But, um, I don't know, maybe there just wasn't as big a market as you would think for this. Um, I did see, I think it was on eBay, there's uh, one seller that apparently they have stock of it, or they still make it, I don't know. But it's from the Russian Federation, and, I mean, nothing against Russians or anything, but um, I have heard that you do have to be a little bit careful when it comes to buying stuff online from there. Um, that's just what I've heard, I've never dealt with them. But um, either way, if you can find this, I would say pick it up, because it does have a lot of utility to it. And like I said, if you're looking for something like this, I can't think of another device that would be a better recommendation than this. As far as size, functionality, everything like that, this thing, it really impressed me. I didn't expect it to be this useful. But either way, that's all that I have for today. Thanks for watching, guys.